Travis Evans, Autodesk Technical Specialist, back with part two of getting more from your 2D data. So today I want to focus on iParts and iLogics. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to show you a little bit about sheet metal. We gave you a, a little stint in the introduction to sheet metal design last time. So one of the great things we can do is to be able to automatically create those flat pattern components uh, with built-in uh, sheet metal defaults to uh, give us that capability. But once we have that, easily save those out as a DXF or DWG file, um, but then building them in the drawing environment to be able to get you know specific information for our manufacturers. So such things as bend notes, to be able to create those automatically, recognizing those features, or we can even create tables with those bend tables. So great things to be able to get the drawings from our 3D models. That's the benefit of moving to 3D. Um, but within this part, I wanna look at different options we have. So if we make kind of similar but different instances of the same piece, so basically we have our own purchasable parts we can have off the shelf, um, we can create those with an I part. Um, so you can see we can change different parameters, different lengths, rename each into one of these pieces, giving it its own unique information with its own unique part number. Um, and inside the part, you can see the different instances of this part we had, similar but different. So the, the length is different, it's gonna need a different thickness. Um, so we can add that in and when we bring that into the assembly environment or we're placing this inside of our larger scheme of things, uh, you can see how easy it is to choose from those different models. We have a simple table, we can drop down and, and pick those different parts with everything associated in the bill of materials so we know we're gonna get the correct bill of materials for our orders. But taking kind of that concept to the, to the next level, so having these similar but different things, um, we have some rules-based technology with iLogic that we can build into our models. So simple if-then statement type workflows. So say if this happens, then what? Um, so we can easily grab from parameters that we discussed last time uh, to be able to pull those parameters that are driving our design pull those into our rules base equations. And so, so we can, for instance, if the parameter length is greater than this, then it's gonna change this other parameter. And then if that isn't occurring, we can set a default. And you can see as I change the parameters, you can notice that my length is changing, which is going to have a, a direct influence on the gauge of, of sheet metal that I'm using. So I can build that model intelligence into my design. But rather than just going through and changing these parameters in the you know from the manage table, we can actually build these custom GUIs or, or forms in Inventor that allow us to modify that kind of on the fly and get real-time updates. So a simple tool to start changing that design. So you can see when I change the length that my gauge is gonna change. I mean you notice because my gauge is related to something else, I can't change that gauge. Um, so there's some really some great technology, some rules built in that allow me to modify my designs. But I can make them as complex as I want. I can add another line of code in. and I mean, I don't have to be a coding expert, just a little bit understanding if, then, what. Um, there's a lot of other parameters and, and different rules that are built into the environment that I can help to build me these rules. So one important piece is a kind of a tip I'm going to provide is so when you go into the assembly environment the thing that's kind of most important is you need to be able to share these parameters um, so I have these parameters I created inside of my part but when I start a new assembly I don't have those parameters so I can just easily pull from those parameters inside of my part and give them a name inside of my assembly environment in this instance I'm just going to give them the same name that it had inside of my part environment and then in my parameters, add those actual parameters that I'm calling from those parts into my design. As you can see, just a simple command, I can go add the parameter and it's gonna have some code built in and I don't have to know the code and just say, hey, I want this parameter, I wanna rename it. Just simple kind of drag and drop inside of the rules environment. So now that I've kind of shared my parameters, the next step is I need to you know, bring another component in to make this assembly. So I have this larger this panel piece. It's going to make a larger, you know, my assembled panel. Um, so adding constraints quickly, easily inside of Inventor. But now as I add more sophistication to those rules and add 
those rules I had inside of my part environment, I need to share those rules inside of my assembly environment as well. So just simple copy paste, bring that in as you can see, I make a modification, not only is my panel going to change, uh, my side member is also going to change, and I've created those constraints and those rules and everything's going to adjust accordingly. Uh, so you can see just the finished assembly of this panel unit and just making some of those changes and having everything update. So if the panel gets longer, the gauge is going to change. If the panel gets wider, the gauge is going to change. If it gets wider and longer, the gauge is going to change again. So I mean just simple rules built inside, you know, that logically when some of that tribal knowledge we have, we can include that tribal knowledge that people know when they're designing included in the iLogix. And so there's a peek at better using your 2D data with iParts and iLogix.